Hi, I'm Johnny. I'm a global artist ambassador for Phoenix 360, and I'm blessed to be joined today by the music producer, Mariba Marcano from Hollywood Independent Inc. Hey, Mariba, how you doing, man? Thank you for having me, John. I'm doing pretty good today. It's good to see you, bud. Direct, uh, remotely from the Caribbean at the moment. Oh, beautiful, man. So where in the Caribbean are you, brother? I'm on the island of Trinidad. That's where I was born and raised. Oh, beautiful. Well, welcome home. And listen, thanks for joining me from there today. And what I wanted to do, Mariba, is share some of your work uh, with our audience. So if it's cool with me, with you, we'll tune into your YouTube channel and check out Your Love is Divine. Sound good? Perfect. Sounds good. All right, cool. All right, everybody. Let's tune in then to Mariba Marcano and Your Love is Divine. Nice work, man. Thank you for sharing your work with us and enjoyed sharing it with the audience. Now tell me, where are you from and Trinidad? And tell me a little bit about how you became a music artist there. Okay, well, I was born on the island of Trinidad. My father is, uh, at least he was because he's now deceased. He was an iconic singer-songwriter, guitarist in the local indigenous art form, which is called Calypso Music. Beautiful. And I actually had my first guitar before I could walk. Wow. Yeah, because he, he, my dad used to, he'd wake me up and uh, he'd come into my room singing and playing the guitar. Sometimes he played the trumpet and that kind of stuff. So I had a really musical background. I, I was fortunate enough to grow up around the, the major artists on the island, around the media, around theater, you know, choreographers, uh, musicians, singers, you name it, you know, artists, you know, painters, that kind of stuff. That's what my, my world was full of. I didn't actually start playing an instrument until uh, like I was about you know seven, eight, nine. Uh -huh. And what, what my dad did for me, he, he always he said, son, you know, as far as music goes, what you want to do is you, you want to learn classical music theory on a piano uh -huh. because you can then apply that to any instrument. So I started taking piano lessons. I, I didn't go very far because, I, you know, I, I was from, uh, it was unusual. I was from a, I had a, 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 what you can call somewhat of an elite kind of upbringing. Uh -huh. I went to private Catholic schools. I went to school with the, you know, the, the, the wealthy people in the nation, which was, which was unusual because my father was a Calypsonian. And it's, not like we were well, it's not like we were wealthy, but right. he was a very highly respected artist. And um, it, to me, it, it, I kind of saw things like 
other rich people did, strangely enough, because when I thought about it, I mean, my dad was a success, but yeah. there weren't too many successful artists, and there weren't too many jobs for successful artists. So after grade one in piano school, I, I, ditched, I ditched the piano school, <laughs> so I got as far as grade one. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I didn't think I'd ever have a job doing it, man. It, nice. just, it just happened, you know, that I, you know, I wound up helping out my dad, and I got into music that way. And I picked up the guitar in my like mid teens. It was the eighties, going into the nineties, and I mean everybody in the world wanted to be Axl Rose and Slash. Right. Yeah. You know, the first, yeah. I, I I I I would spend hours just learning Sweet Child of Mine, just trying uh -huh. to get the never, never actually got it down. <laughs> just <trying to> get <laughs> That's it. cool. I, I, I played over and over forever and ever. Yeah. And so my my biggest influences are as far as as far as music goes. And my guitar playing is actually my dad. Yeah. His his, his guitar his, his style of guitar playing, he never really used to use too much on his live performances because calypso music is not very heavy on the guitars. Uh huh. You know? and, um, yeah. And he, he's actually a blues master. He, one of his things is dissonance. I mean, his 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 the way he bends notes, like BB King or or you know. Right. One of the of course he's a great. Wow. Oh yeah! Oh my God! You know, so so that 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 was how I really got into music and stuff. Well, Mariba, that's amazing. I mean, to have that kind of you know childhood and to have a dad that was that talented and such a range. Also, you say you know with, I mean, a star in Calypso and and you know elite on the island and opportunities for you um, because of it. Uh, but also, I love hearing about his interest, blues and other kinds of things outside of this genre. You know that he expressed yeah, himself so, you know, beautifully. Big, 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 big reggae fan, also. He, I mean, you know, I'd say this too because back then it was vinyl. Yeah. And only thing my dad is that he was one of the coolest guys around, and um, he had thousands of vinyl. Wow. And he'd, li he'd listen to he'd listen to classical music, he'd listen to jazz, he'd listen to blues, he'd listen to reggae, he'd listen to world music. I mean, you know, Latin music. He, he listened to it all. That exposure for you is amazing. It's, you know, that education you received. It's amazing. You know what I mean? Well, now translating into all your, you know, your musical talents, of course, with multiple instruments, uh, and then now producing for other artists, right? Yes, yes, yes. Um, what I, what I, what I, well, just one other thing I'd like to add really quickly. Please. My please dad was, yeah. Is that he, he, he thought one of his heroes, I mean, he had lots of heroes. Uh, like I mentioned, B.B. King was one of his big heroes. Uh huh. Uh, Count Basie, he he loved the band leaders also, right. and um, one of his big heroes also, and one of his major influences outside of like Calypso and other things was uh was uh, oh my Bob Dylan. That's the name. Bob of the Dylan. Huh. Yeah, he he considered Bob Dylan and the Beatles as far as he was concerned, they were like Calypsonians from different countries. <laughs> is the way he thought right. about it, and he, when he first moved to New York. He actually, his sales pitch, he, he presented himself because a lot of people didn't know what Calypso was. Yes. As a Caribbean folk singer, because he, he considered himself a folk singer. Wow, man. And, and, and listen, I got to tell you what, I love hearing about that too, the, the Bob Dylan inspiration, which was my very first guitar songbook. You know what I mean? And like, really? you know, yeah. So at any rate, I, I also feel like, you know, I appreciate, again, hearing about your dad. I'm glad we're honoring him today also. Um, and that you've carried on this legacy is amazing, Mariba. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, it was cool, too, because I remember, like, when I first hit, went to the States, I got, I got my green card when I was, what, 19? Yeah. I got my student visa when I was 16, and I went to the U.S. Virgin Islands, which to me was, I mean, to me it was heavenly. I, I was like, oh, my God, it's America, it's the Caribbean. This is where I want to live. This is where I want to be, sure. you know? And um, my my American friends, they seem like Mariba. You sound like Jimi Hendrix, and I, I've never heard of Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> I, I hear you. <laughs> That's funny, yeah. Because my dad, he had this apart from apart from his bending of notes, the way he'd use like hammer-ons with his pinky fingers. Yep. And stuff. I, I used to do a lot of that stuff. You know, That's great. So that, that that turned a lot of people on. <laughs> Eddie Van Halen hammers. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's cool, Mariba. You know, listen, you know, and now I got to tell you, it's interesting how you progressed to the extent in which and when you're producing music and work and with other artists. Right. And so you're able right. to mentor them based upon such a rich legacy. 
it's right. really incredible, you know. And so, ironically, huh? ironically, ironically, I'm really, really more of an electronic artist. Ironically, okay. as yeah. it turns out, you know. But I, I the, the, there was something about actually because you know when when you I mean electronic music, I I, I play keyboards a lot, but it's still a lot of like right now the, the latest artist that I'm my latest uh, pseudonym that I'm making music uh, with cool. is something called Outer National Music. And that's strictly electronica. I don't even play an instrument at all. I just use a piano roll to, to program my stuff. And um, the thing about it is, is that with, a, with, an, with an acoustic instrument, if you will, or with an instrument where you actually have to depress a note with your fingers, you, you, you have to use your muscles to, to press something. There's yeah. a more spiritual connection. It's like you feel the music more when you're playing it. Understood. Yeah. You know, I like that. Yeah. Which to me was really important, you know. Um, and, and the instrument like, itself has soul. The instrument itself has ex this energetic. Exactly, exactly. You know, yeah, I appreciate that too. And um, uh, some of my newer works uh, is just like strict. It's just straight up EDM. I, I was doing some work with uh, like the, the last major production that I did. I haven't released it yet. Was with a little p a, a punk rock band from Melbourne in Australia. <laughs> Yeah, we, I hooked up with this guy. This kid, he's a teenager. I mean, he was like 17, 18 years old. But I love his songs, man. And uh, I said, listen, I want to do a remix for this new project I have. And he sent me a vocal track. And I did some music to added some music to it. And we did, you know, it's just really great. I just want to plug his band also. The name of the band is No Vacancy. Cool. No album. Vacancy. All right. Yeah. No They're a great band. Also, I have, um, I did, I did some work. Uh, uh, I've used lots of platforms that lots of different DAWs, you know, um, Cakewalk, uh, Pro Tools, Presona St Studio One artist. Okay. Uh, right now I'm using BandLab, which is just an online DAW, and they have a, a, a more advanced version that's called Cakewalk, you know. Uh, nice. When I first got, when I first got Presona St Studio One, which I think is a phenomenal DAW, it's now on par with, with Pro Tools as, you know, the industry standard. I was in LA at a little home studio in Westlake, and there's an African American family that I became close to. And uh, what was it? One of the one of the uncles. I mean, a lot of jazz musicians, a lot of rock musicians. Want to give a shout? Yeah, yeah. You want to, you know that that song? Ot Otis, D Otis Day in yeah. the Night. Yeah, Otis Day in the Night, right? Yeah, his daughter. Out, baby. Yeah. yeah, yeah, his daughter. We we were close for a while, and. I wanted to, to, to do a remake of the song. Huh, cool. And I, but I wanted to do it in, in a style that sounded like, like, I mean, you could play it right next to a Drake song or to a Lil Wayne song and, and you wouldn't skip a beat. Right. So what, I, what I did is I took this um, come together and I just totally electronic. And then I put in some guitar work to the end. And the girl's name is Amelia Jesse. Nice. And I also have a couple yes. with her. It's, a, it's incredible tracks. These, you know, you, all, all that one has to do is you Google my name, Moriba Marcano. I'm on SoundCloud. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Spotify. You know, all those kinds of things. But those collaborations are mostly on SoundCloud. Well, listen, Moriba, we are going to look forward to hearing them by tuning into your social media channels, man. And yeah, we're going to post them below our interview today. And we're also going to be looking forward to you coming up on Phoenix 360. You know, it's great oh, yeah. that, you're, that you're a voice and a talent behind the scenes now for these other artists. And your mentoring is going to That's be, what I want to do. right? That's where you are That's in the, right now. So right. look, I want everyone to tune in to Mariba Marcano's social media channels you find below our interview. Also look for Hollywood Independent Inc., the label. Right. And we're looking forward to all the artists that you collaborate with. And, and Mariba, thank you so much, brother, for being with me, man. Yeah, and don't forget out to national music, you know? Absolutely. John, you know, thank you. you think, I love your spirit, man. You know, just you, you, have, you have great personality. You, you're patient. You know, you helped us. We had a little technical difficulties earlier on. You helped us work through, right that through, through that. I also want to mention, I see you got surfboards, man. I yeah, love man. the beach. I'm, well, come on. You're down in L.A. <laughs> Let's hook up and go out on a lot more <laughs> together, brother. I'm, Okay. I also think Phoenix is a great platform. I want to uh -huh. thank Phoenix also for, for creating a, an, an easy way for artists to get into NFTs and cryptocurrency, which is the future. You That's know, right. I'm glad. glad. We're, listen, we're really happy to have you also as an ambassador for the platform. And I really appreciate being with you today, brother. Thank you so much. Thank man. you. Thank Respect. You. Mariba Marcano. <laughs>
need a cute concentrate She'll ask me what's wrong when I'm writing a song To tell her that my heart just can't take her anymore I'll stop eating her To tell me with pain to find